Well, what's it like today is the first day, or supposed to be the first day of the NCAA tournament. You guys could have been playing today, but uh, you're sitting on your couch. Uh, how does that feel? Uh, it's obviously disappointing. I mean, we worked really, really hard to get to the position that we were in. Uh, we won our conference tournament, and, you know, we are supposed to go dancing. So it's, it's disappointing. I know what could have been, but at the same time, we, we understand the circumstances. They're definitely unique, and they're very severe. So understanding, but also disappointed. Uh, you've had a week to kind of process it. Has, has the understanding, I guess, uh, o over time kind of, kind of helped a little bit? Because I'm sure the shock initially last week was, was just tough. Yeah, it definitely has. Um, but at the same time, it's almost like it also makes it worse a little bit. That makes sense. Um, just kind of having that long kind of drug out experience, just like, wow, like this is day whatever without sports. Like this is day whatever without basketball. Like it gets tougher by the day. And especially, you know, with no gyms or anything really being open around here or really anywhere, um, you know, it's tough to go get shots up. Or, you know, you, a lot of us just kind of been doing like home workouts, just trying to get a sweat in. Um, it's really weird and it's eerie and uh, it's kind of hard to understand. But, you know, like I said earlier, it's kind of it's definitely for a greater cause. It's, you know, it's a very severe circumstance. So we're understanding of it. Sure. What have you been doing to pass the time over the last week? Like I said, some some small in-home workouts, um, you know, kind of whatever you can do. And also, just kind of spending time with family, um, watching some movies, uh, catching up on some much needed sleep, been eating a lot. Um, I was able to see a couple of my friends once um, before all the restaurants shut down, which was nice. And uh, but other than that, really just kind of killing time however you can. Board games, card games, whatever you can kind of find to pass the time. Sure. How often have you kept in touch with your teammates? Every day. I mean, we're always texting and Snapchatting and communicating, you know, sending FaceTimes to one another. So, I mean, it's. I mean, that's a really, we're a really strong, uh, well-connected group. So we're always talking and communicating, you know, sending each other tweets and Instagram posts and all that stuff. So we're constantly communicated. You know, we're all, we're all really, really close. Like I said, um, those are some of my best friends. So it's been really good to be able to communicate with them, even during this kind of isolated time, if you will. Yeah, yeah. You guys played out scenarios. Like I've seen mock brackets out there. I don't know if you paid attention to that. Yeah, we, I've seen those. Uh, we try not to. I mean, that, that's hard to do. Um, you know, just like I'm sure every team in the country is saying, we could have been, we should have been. Yeah, I mean, that, that's hard to do. And um, so you know, we try not to do that and just kind of, you know, talk about maybe next year and talk about kind of some of the glories we've had this year, whether it was, you know, that win in Evansville against Murray State, you know, going up to Boston College and getting that win, just some fun performances we've had, the Battle of the Boulevard games. Talking about that stuff, I um, mean, obviously our – I think our Twitter page has kind of put out some cool stuff. One of them was like Seth's big career night. Um, kind of talking about some of that fun stuff. But no, the whole hypothetical stuff can be kind of agonizing, at least in my opinion. Talking about, you know, we all know when it comes to March, yeah, anything can happen. So I guess we'll, we just kind of leave it at that. Anything could have happened and hopefully something will happen next season. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned Seth. What, what was it like for, for the seniors, like seeing it in their eyes and then how you guys felt for them knowing that they're, they're done? You know, it was kind of weird because when the news broke, we were all together. We were all getting lunch and it was all I think we all kind of had a selfish reaction at first. Um, we all hung out that night and just kind of spent time together, you know, listen to music. It was actually the night that we were supposed to be tornadoes, but there wasn't. So we all kind of stayed in, kind of spooked from the tornadoes that hit us previously. So we wake up the next morning and we all have a team meeting. Coach is kind of going to tell us we got to get out off campus and all this other stuff. And that's kind of when it hit, you know, some of our assistant coaches kind of pitched in on Scan and Seth and Mike. And that I think was when it really hit me. And I think a lot of the other guys, too. it was really emotional time. Um, a lot of guys were, I think there were a couple of guys are almost cried. Like it was just, it was terrible. And we kind of talked about kind of what those three guys meant to us and our program and our team. And it was super, super sad. And then you really felt like, yeah, it's rough for me and Kunk and Grace and all those guys. You know, but we got a year or two. Some of those guys have three more years left to make it back to the NCAA tournament. But you know, with Seth and Scan and Mike, you know, they don't get that opportunity again. And it's really disheartening. It's really sad. And it really just, you know, like I said earlier, those are kind of some of my best friends. So it's, it's just, it's terrible to think about. And, you know, we're always being in contact with them, just kind of, you know, helping them through the time. Yeah, well, that's that's good, man. That's good. I got to like, did the trainers, assistant coaches, anybody give you any any 
detail or uh, or instruction about you know maybe things to do to stay in shape while you're while you're gone? I mean, it's tough because none of us have really been in a situation like this, so we don't really know what to do. I was actually just texting my uh, strength coach yesterday, and he's going to give us some stuff we can do at home, kind of voluntary type stuff. If you kind of want to get back in shape, which you know all of our guys guys are kind of eager to do because you know we're so bored and I guess isolated. So, um, but like I said, it's hard, you know, I mean, we don't really, it's kind of unprecedented. We don't really know what's going on. You know, you can't just go over to your local gym, um, cause everything's closed. So, um, just kind of doing what you can, I guess, whether, you know, pushups, wall sits, you know, simple stuff, I guess going around, going around the neighborhood and running. Um, but it's weird. I mean, there's not really much, you can't look back on Well, the last time this happened, people did this, you know, there is no last time. So it's kind of a weird situation we're just trying to make the best of until it kind of passes by. Sure. Well, I got to ask, I mean, since it is March Madness time, you get you, you watching the old video against Temple last year just to kind of lift your spirits? Yeah, I've been watching some old film for sure. Actually, I haven't watched any Belmont stuff yet. I'm not, not to that phase yet, but I have been watching some of my old uh, favorite NBA games and college basketball games, just kind of on YouTube, going back and watching that and I'm sure we'll get to the point where I'm ready to watch some Belmont basketball too, but I haven't done it yet. All right. Well, Nick, thanks for very much for taking the time, man. Enjoy, I don't know, I guess the time off. Be safe and, and be healthy, man. Yeah, thanks. You do the same.